Hi everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this episode, we're going to learn the two to six player game, Eggs and Empires by Matthew Riddle and Benjamin Pinchback. At the time of this recording, the game is currently on Kickstarter and I do not make a habit of covering Kickstarter games. But every now and then, I do like to break my own rules. I'd like to state up front, this is not a paid preview. I'm backing the game myself and Matt and Ben are friends of the show and friends of mine. And that's really why I wanted to feature the game. Their other game, Fleet, was very popular, but this is much different. So I thought people might be interested in learning a little bit more about this very fast, easy to learn game. And then you can decide for yourself whether or not this is a game that would be a good fit for you, your family, or your gaming group. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. Before we get started, I should make very clear that aside from the majority of the artwork, the components you see here are not the final production quality. Eggs and Empires will not come packaged inside of a little Bible stories puzzle box. I know, that's disappointing. What you will get are six sets of ten identical cards. The egg cards, and then a tiebreaker token and scoring tokens, which you'll use or not depending on how you choose to score your games. These card back designs will also be replaced with full artwork instead of the patterns that you see here. Let's pretend we were setting up for a three player game. Each player would take their own colored set of 10 cards, shuffle and put it face down. The deck of eggs would also be shuffled and placed face down as well. A random player is chosen to take the coveted tiebreaker marker and everything else can be returned to the box. Now each player draws an opening hand of three cards. You never show your opponents what you're holding. But if you don't like your opening hand, you can discard it and draw three new cards that you must keep. And then you shuffle your remaining cards back into a single draw deck. Based on the number of players, a certain number of egg cards are then drawn and placed face up in the center of the table. In a three player game, you draw two. And that's the setup. In Eggs and Empires, the rare and valuable dragon eggs await those adventurers brave and clever enough to collect them. But the dragons are getting wise to these thieving adventurers and they've started hiding exploding eggs amongst their nests. So you're going to want to ensure you collect the best, most valuable eggs and avoid the ones that will blow up in your face. <laughs> the gameplay is very simple. On a turn, each player selects one card from their hand to put face down in front of them then all at once, all of the players will reveal their chosen card. Each card in your deck represents one of the 10 different adventurers. And remember, each player's deck is identical, so you know potentially which adventurer each player could choose during a turn. Once the adventurers have been revealed, the one with the highest value gets to choose one of the available face-up eggs first. The dragon eggs have different victory point values. More is better, so the blue player would probably choose this one. If two people choose the same adventurer and therefore have tied values, then the player seated in clockwise order closest to the player with the tiebreaker marker will get to choose a dragon egg next. At the end of a turn in which the tiebreaker marker was used to resolve the collection of eggs, it will move to the next player in clockwise order. So as you can see, if you don't play your cards right, you may not be able to collect an egg. Our green player received no points this turn. In some cases, however, you may not want an egg. What if instead these had been the revealed dragon eggs? It's important to note, you must collect an egg if you're next in line to take one, even if it's a bad one. So in this case, the blacksmith would of course take the good nine victory point egg. And then this merchant, once again breaking the tie, would have to take the exploding egg and then would lose seven points at the end of the game. In this case, the green player would be a lot happier with this outcome than in the last example. But wait, you say, what is all this writing on the cards? There's more than just numbers. And you're right. Each character has an effect which also resolves when played and influences the outcome of a turn. For example, the player who uses the blacksmith will lose four points if they do not collect an egg that turn. And the merchant, if they did not collect an egg, will actually receive six victory points at the end of the round. So in this case, the green player is really happy. They don't take the red egg, and on top of that, because they didn't collect an egg at all, they'll gain an additional six points. Let's say instead, the green player had chosen the shepherd. He has a pretty low value at three. However, the shepherd always collects egg cards prior to the blacksmith. 
So in this situation, the green player would get the nine victory point egg card, the blacksmith would collect the minus seven victory point card, and the merchant would go home with nothing, but then at the end of the round would collect an additional six points because of the effect on the card. Players place collected dragon eggs in a face down personal pile, and then at the end of the round, they discard each of their characters. A new card is drawn from their decks and added to their hands, and then you start the next round by revealing new dragon eggs. Ooh, this one's going to be nasty. Now when choosing their adventurer for the next round, they're going to have additional information because they can see the characters that their opponents have already used. After nine turns of collecting eggs, the round is over. Now players will total up their victory points based on the eggs they've collected and any character effects that might have resolved during that round. You record your score, then reset everything. Play two more rounds, just like the first, but at the end of each round, again, total up your points. Sum the points from all three rounds and the player with the most wins the game. Alternatively, you can score using these tokens. Now, instead of accumulating a score round after round, the individual winner of each round will collect a token. And then you play as many rounds as necessary until one player has collected either two or three tokens, which is based on the number of players. And that's how you play eggs and empires. Now there's a lot of different reasons why I don't typically cover Kickstarter games on our series. I've talked about it in the past. I'll put a link to the video in the description of this one if you'd like to check out the details. But one of the main reasons is because the delivery time for a Kickstarter is often a big question mark. No matter what they estimate, sometimes things are delayed by weeks, months, years even. I don't like the idea that I've shared a game with you that you might have an interest in, but now you don't get to try it out or enjoy it for who knows how long. Well, the nice thing about this Kickstarter is once you back, you'll immediately gain access to a print and play copy. So you can print the game out and start enjoying it right away. If this does interest you, in the US, the cost is $16 and that includes the shipping. In Canada, for a copy, it's gonna be $25 and that includes the shipping. Europe is 28 and anywhere else in the world is 32. I'll put a link to the Kickstarter in the description of this video. But either way, hopefully, you've got enough information to make an informed decision about whether or not this game would be a good fit for you. Until the next episode, thanks for watching.